Hello there, Internets. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a review of the uh, Next Level Racing Boeing Military Simpit thing, uh, including their stand for monitor. Uh, they say this will support up to a 55-inch monitor, which that was kind of the original game plan when we bought a new TV last summer. And uh, sorry for a disheveled basement, but uh, this is where the old six or the old toys went. And we're other than me, we don't spend a whole lot of time down here, but uh, instead that old TV went down there and I just elected to continue to use my 32 inch monitor, which is perfectly good for what I'm doing here. It's a Samsung of some kind I picked up for about 75 bucks. I forget the exact model, but for flight simming, it works great. Now, as far as the chair itself, it's only comfortable for about 90 minutes to two hours. After that, you need to get up, and at least I do, and move around as leg starts to fall asleep. Which is probably not fantastic, but um, do that. And then I'm using the Thrustmaster Warthog system along with the uh, pendulum pedals. I've got my keyboard set up there. And with a center-mounted stick, it's not that awkward to get into but I do find that it is relatively awkward to get out of. Um, now I have it all the way forward right now and I have the cushion off because I've got to tighten the bolts. And after about, oh, 14 months of use, you know, this is getting rubbed a little bit raw, but I'll show you there's probably a reason for that. And that has nothing to do with their um, system. But the one problem I have are these bolts holding this track in place keep working themselves loose. And I have this one off right here to show you. There's no slotted head in these, they're, they're smooth. You know, these others over here had an Allen head slot in them, which meant that, you know, you could put an Allen wrench there and then tighten this down with a, with a socket, you know, either a screwdriver or a, a gear wrench or whatever you want to call it, a uh, socket wrench you know, and, and really tighten it down. But, you know, these are kind of a semi-locking thread here. In theory, that should be enough, but it's not. I'm going to add some thread locker, some blue Loctite, and see what happens if that doesn't fix it. If not, then probably my next solution is to go up to Ace Hardware and get some slotted head uh, bolts about the size or hex head nuts that I can... Uh, use a socket and a like screwdriver or something to really crank down and tighten them up, put some torque on them. Um, so yeah, this one fits in there and that bolt was completely off. So sliding it backwards and forwards uh, really just seems to have an impact there. It's held up well for flight sims. I would think racing driving sims be similar, works great. If you're playing other games, let's say like uh, Helldivers 2, it's okay. I, I need to use the lumbar pad um, to make it comfortable for more than an hour at a time. It works. Um, again, the only thing is if you have a center-mounted stick, it's kind of hard to get in and out of. As, especially when you reach, uh, you know, more than being young. And then I've added some decals. You know, I fixed the, the whole Boeing logo issue. Uh, put on my nice Phantom 2. Couldn't find a sticker I liked for the F-15E, which I guess was kind of fortuitous now, given that I've uh, refunded the F-15 in, in DCS. Given the current state, I'm just kind of keeping the money around and the, the store credit because there's nothing out there I really want to buy. And... You know, maybe DCS and Eagle Dynamics and RASBAM will get that shit show figured out. If they do, I'll rebuy it. If not, well, I don't know. I kind of have everything I want in the DCS world as it stands right now. <laughs> I've got the Phantom. Uh, if they improve Cola, I might buy the Cola Peninsula. I'm not really that thrilled with the way that Afghanistan's being done. Um... I guess we'll see if there's a big uptake there and, you know, it gets used in multiplayer servers and stuff. But next level sim rig, I mean, it works. It's comfortable enough for most flight simming needs. It has a relatively small footprint compared to what my other old sim pits used to be. Um, as I kind of show you more of the disheveled basement down here, but 
this was essentially SimPit 2.0. And yes, yeah, so whenever we repaint the business or the, the basement and everything this fall, uh, probably will be a color scheme based on that because that's going to go up. And then, uh, yeah, this was SimPit 1.0 from the old house. Now back to being a, a workbench and kind of a messy one at that. To be fair, we just put new windows and new HVAC systems, so this part of the basement is still not fully uh, fixed up quite yet. Um, put in new shelving, moved shelving. So still in the process of cleaning everything up here. Give it another weekend and everything here should probably be back to sorted, but we just shoved crap as much crap as we could over here to for the uh, windows guy, window guy, and then the HVAC people. So anyway, that's kind of the evolution of sim pits here. One, two, and three. Uh, is it worth it at seven hundred some odd dollars? I think is what the setup cost. That's something you have to make up your mind. Um, I will still say for longer periods of time, a good office chair and a desk setup probably is a little bit better. Or if you can build your own custom sim pit with wood and out of other materials uh, and be able to use an office chair around it, I think that's still more comfortable. But if you're looking for the immersion, it, it's perfectly serviceable and there might be some other options and stuff out there. They're more expensive, less expensive. But for my needs, it kind of puts everything into one place, a little bit out of the way, and works. So thanks for watching and see you next time.